were to file that information, uh, they're going to have their identification checked for who they are, right, to get into the building? I'm not certain uh, uh, if they were to admit it to the building, you actually can walk into uh, most uh, FBI offices, I think, without having to go through security. But you wouldn't consider it draconian if, while they're filing this uh, complaint or allegation, their driver's license was looked at, would you? Well, if we're going to conduct an investigation, we need to know who the witnesses are. Thank you. I, I just so I wanted to know that that wasn't draconian. Uh, in the case of Mr. Strzok, uh, the, you know, there was an appearance of impropriety uh, that people are observing, but you, you'd said, well, there may not have been the reason, but if it wasn't the appearance of impropriety uh, based on his numerous uh, rather uh, strident tweets, uh, or not tweets, but uh, text, uh, uh, commenting adversely on the president, what was it? I, if I said that, Congressman, it, it was inadvertent, uh, the decision to remove Mr. Strzok off that case was made by Director Mueller based upon the circumstances known to him. It's important to understand, though, that those text messages were uncovered in the course of an inspector general investigation that's not complete, so we won't be able to make any determination about what if any discipline is required? Well, let me go to the Inspector General now. Uh, this is uh, Michael Horowitz, right? Correct. Michael Horowitz has repeatedly complained that uh, uh, he cannot, in fact, he does not have the authority to, to look for uh, impropriety by lawyers as to their conduct as lawyers because the Office of uh, uh, the, office, the uh, OPF, OPR has that authority. That's still true, isn't it? It's true, but he does have authority for certain types of misconduct by lawyers. Okay, so we have a situation in which he can look at some of the misconduct, not others. So one of the pieces of misconduct he cannot look at would be the question of, of bias or the appearance of bias in their investigations, uh, in how they're conducting it, or, or, and or decisions. Uh, that is uniquely excluded to the Inspector General in your cabinet position versus all other cabinet positions. If, if I were I'm not certain about that, and uh, if I may, I'll, I'll check and get back to you on that. But, it would either, but he is excluded. It would either be OPR or the Inspector General. Uh, and with regard to conflicts of interest, I believe certain of those are within the jurisdiction of the Inspector General, but I'd have to verify. Okay, well, you can get back to me on that. The, uh, you know, these political views that Mr. Shabbat uh, mentioned, and they're, they're pretty clear that these are people who, who had a strong preference. Uh, but notwithstanding that, let's be very candid. Nobody up here is going to claim to be without their political bias. So one of the reasons that uh, when there is a a conflict of interest, people recuse themselves, and when there is a, uh, an appearance of impropriety, they're excused. And one of the reasons that we look to a special prosecutor and that you appointed a special prosecutor was to not only get past the politics on this dais, but to get past the appearance of any uh, uh, conflict by the Department of Justice. Is that fair to say? To, uh minimize uh, any appearance on either side of bias, correct? Okay, but the, uh, a special prosecutor under the remaining statute, how it's done, is still a, a group looking for wrongdoing. That is their charge. Is they're not looking for right doing, they're looking for wrongdoing. That's fair to say, like, like any prosecutor, you're not looking for innocence? The way I would characterize a congressman is that they're looking for the truth, and then they'll make a determination about whether or not it's appropriate to prosecute. Okay, so my question to you is, if that's the case, if we accept that, my assumption, that they're looking to, if they can, to hang the president or people around him, hear me out for a moment, uh, then there really isn't a problem with having people that are dead set on trying to find anything that will incriminate the administration in a Russian connection, which is somewhat their charge. So. I'll posture to you that maybe it's not that bad to have people who really dislike the president and would like to hang him. Having said that, when there's impropriety, such as Mr. Strzok, when there is in fact uh, a history at the FBI of withholding information from Congress, when there is the appearance of impropriety by the Department of Justice, and when the Inspector General is limited under the statute, both because he doesn't have full access and because certain portions are out of it. Wouldn't you say that this is a classic example where in order to investigate the FBI 
and the Department of Justice, a special prosecutor who is equally looking for the truth if it exists adversely to the conduct of the FBI and the Department of Justice is within your charge and responsibility to see that happens. Well, you, you the time of the gentleman has expired. You built a number of assumptions into your question, answer, Congressman, but... and my, my simple answer to it would be that uh, you know, if we believe there was a basis for uh, an investigation or a special counsel, I can assure you that we would act. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would say that since we've already had dismissals for wrongdoing, since there's ongoing internal investigations, the elements necessary to ask for a special prosecutor to, in fact, see what was done wrong already exist. Time of the gentleman has